Hey, my name is Tom uh, and welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. The people have spoken. This week I asked through the polling feature on YouTube what video you think I should be working on next. And I was amazed, I was surprised it came out pretty close. But at the time of recording, the good people of YouTube asked for a video to update you on our, our heat pump performance for the month of January this year. I'm, I'm fairly sure I will go on to make the other two videos because I'm interested in thinking through those topics and because a good number of people suggested that they would want to see them. But for now, we're on this one. How does a heat pump perform in the middle of winter in a Victorian terrace in the northeast of England? Well, let's start with some context of this winter. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like it's been fairly strange. Sometimes you could say it's been fairly mild, maybe even warm. Um, we've already had three named storms in the UK this year, Henk, Jocelyn and Aisha. We've had a bit of cold wintry weather. It was minus 14 on the 17th of January in Dalwini. I hope the whiskey was okay. But then also we had a new maximum temperature record for January of 19.9 on the 28th of January up in Scotland. That swing is fairly odd. The Met Office has done a nice little summary um, on the daily mean temperature and rainfall for the UK. Um, and it actually says that the average mean temperature has been around 0.1 degrees lower than the long-term average temperature in January. So maybe it's not been as warm as I thought it was. If you followed my videos on this channel for a while, you know that I like to use the metric degree days to help analyze the energy use of our heat pump. I did a video about it. You can have a look at it up here. Um, degree days are basically a metric that describes, describes the temperature below a certain point. So the point that we heat above and for, and it gives, a, get, gives an idea of how long it was below that temperature at a certain location. So let's give a little example. Um, if we go onto the heating degree days website and we pick the temperature as 15.5 degrees as the base, if the temperature had been zero degrees outside for 24 hours, that would be 15.5 degree days in total. So using the metric degree days, what does it mean for the temperature this January? Well, January this year had just under 350 degree days and that's compared to 307 uh, in December last month. Um, there were less heating degree days last January, 5% less and even less or fewer but uh, heat degree days two years ago, 8% less. So it suggests that this year has been the coolest of the last three. The last three years are relevant as they are the three Januaries that we've had a heat pump and we've been heating with a heat pump. So it's, it's helpful because we can compare how things have changed over the last three years. Okay, so what are the figures on how the heat pump has performed this year in comparison to those last few years? Back in January 2022, so two years ago, we used 864 kilowatt hours of electricity to provide 2,439 kilowatt hours of heat during the month of January. So that's 2.66 kilowatt hours of electricity per degree day for that month, and an efficiency for the month of, two of 282%, or an average COP of 2.82. Last year, in January 2023, we were actually away for, for New Year and then for a week or so at the start of the year. So we actually used quite a bit less heat and electricity because we had the heating off and we had no showers or hot water for a good 10 days at the start of the month. Um, so for the whole of January, we only used 644 kilowatt hours of electricity, but to deliver 1,734 kilowatt hours of heat. That's an average efficiency of only 2.69, which is really quite low. Um, but per degree day, we used less than 2022 because we didn't heat for a lot of the month. So that was only 1.94 kilowatt hours per degree day in 2023. And maybe that skews it a little bit, it's been away. So I might not use this as part of the comparison. Okay, but this January, 5% more degree days than last year and 8% more degree days uh, than two years ago. So potentially colder than both. We used 824 kilowatt hours of electricity to deliver 2,663 kilowatt hours of heat. And there were eight, because of those 8% more degree days in 2024 than 2022, 
we actually used 9% more heat. So maybe we were 1% more comfy. But this year was 2.36 kilowatt hours of electricity used per degree day. So quite a bit less than two years ago because our efficiency was quite a bit higher. Up to 323% or a COP of 3.23. 14.5% up on 2022. So we've had an average January, according to the Met Office. We've had some warm weather, we've had some cold weather, and we've had an efficiency of our heat pump of 323%. So how does this compare with a gas boiler in terms of costs and emissions for the month of January? Let's start with the more important one. Let's start with emissions. At the average CO2 intensity of the grid um, that we would use for CO2 reporting in a company or, or, or an organization, the emissions of our heat pump were 170 kilograms of CO2 compared to 541 kilograms for a gas boiler delivering the same heat at 90% efficiency. So we could assume that we've reduced emissions by 68.6%. The CO2 intensity of the grid does vary uh, day by day, week by week, month by month. And my grid GB, a great website run by a guy I know called Andrew Crossland, suggests that UK emissions were for, for grid emissions were 265 kilograms of sorry grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, which would bring my heat pump emissions up by almost 50 kilograms. And that would mean that we've only reduced our emissions by 60%. But we could also uh, say that electricity in the Northeast tends to be very low emissions, partly because of the, the nuclear power station at Hartlepool wind turbines off the coast uh, or on land and because of connections to Scotland and elsewhere. So the emissions reduction of our heat pump could be even higher than, than what we assume. So we'll just say that it's between 60 and 70% lower emissions than a gas boiler in January, which is great. So yeah, what does this mean for costs for this month? The 824 kilowatt hours that we used in January um, and I just looked up the latest tariffs from Octopus, a standard tariff from the Flexbus Octop Octopus tariff charges 27.8 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity. So at that rate, that, that number, that 824 kilowatt hours would have cost 229 pounds for the month. To deliver the same heat, 2,663 kilowatt hours from a 90% efficient gas boiler, again, on the standard Octopus rate would have cost 217 pounds. So a fairly normal gas boiler would have been £12 cheaper to run than our heat pump over the last month. But we're not on the standard uh, Octopus tariff. We're on a smart Octopus tariff called Octopus Agile. And our rates over the last month have been only 17.88 pence per kilowatt hour. So our costs would have been £147 for heating and hot water in January. £70 cheaper than the standard gas rate. But I'll add one more disclaimer, and I've actually been challenged on this uh, by a couple of people that have picked up on previous videos that I've missed out a uh, smart tariff for gas. If I'm using a smart tariff for Octopus, from Octopus for electricity, then we should try and use their fancy tariff for gas too. So here's some broader analysis. Octopus have a tracker tariff for gas and electricity. And over the last month, the average rate for gas in the northeast on the tracker tariff was only 4.34 pence per kilowatt hour. So at that rate, a boiler delivering the same heat would have cost £128 to run, £19 cheaper than my heat pump on the Agile tariff. Octopus have a huge number of different tariffs. Um, there's a great website that compares them all. Uh, I'm not sure what's best, but you can see a bunch of options on energy-stats.uk. And there may be a cheaper tariff that will bring down heat pump costs even further. I'm not sure. Do let me know. So overall, our heat pump was, let's say, a similar price to a gas boiler over the month of January. Depending on the tariff we want to compare against, we're either saving £70 over that month or we're costing £100 more. I don't know. How do you see things? But that's the reality of costs for our heat pump. We live in a Victorian terrace with, with some good loft insulation, with some double glazing and a modern extension. Um, we don't have solar panels yet, um, and solar panels would support the cost of heating with a heat pump. We do have a subscription to Ripple Energy that should start generating soon. That will reduce our costs from the spring onwards. 
So maybe next January with a Ripple subscription, our costs will be that bit lower, even lower than a gas boiler on the tracker tariff. But that's it. That's my summary of a heat pump in January. We've had some strange weather this January, some cold weather, some record warm weather, but overall a fairly average January, according to the Met Office. We spent £147 on electricity to power the heat pump and we were comfortable all month long. Our efficiency was 323% and we reduced emissions versus a gas boiler by at least 60%. What do you think? Is that good enough for you in the deepest, darkest winter? If you wanted to look at a snazzy octopus tariff, then uh, if you switch using my link, then we both get a little bonus. If you wanted to find out more about Ripple Energy, there'll be another link below. If you wanted to get a quote for installing a heat pump, have a look through the Eco Experts. Again, a link below. And if you wanted to support the work that I do, then feel free to buy me a coffee also in the link below. Thank you and see you next time, maybe for a video on the apps that I use to reduce costs at home or on solar PV in my community, or maybe on a video that you would be particularly interested in thinking through. If you've got any suggestions, then please do drop me a comment uh, below this video.